So thank you very much. So as uh, Lindsay introduced me, my name is Mary Ashinyo. I work with the Ghana Health Service. My background is in public health with emphasis on health policy and systems management. I am with the Ghana Health Service as Deputy Director at the Institutional Care Division, which is responsible for all public hospitals in Ghana. And uh, I am specifically also the lead for quality for the Ghana Health Service. And maybe an additional cap in making this presentation, I would wear the cap of the National Focal Person for WASH in healthcare facilities. So as advised uh, by Lindsay, the conversation has been that I should talk about uh, the high level picture of the process of integrating WASH into our district health information management systems how that data is collected, how it is analyzed and how we use the data. Um, I'm also supposed to share a little bit about future plans for the syndicators, what our goals for the integration is and how it's going. And then what we plan to um, use the data uh, for and what else we can do with it apart from what we have done so far. And also what other partnerships we would have identified for a successful use of these indicators. And if there are any barriers, and also what analytical and visualization capacities we have for the data. So these will be my focus in today's presentation. So I have actually split the Ghana's experience into three phases. I would say that the first phase of uh, integrating WASH indicators into routine reporting uh, started from 2018. And uh, from 2018 to date, uh, we have had facilities reporting every quarter into the system. We currently have a little above 2,000 facilities reporting out of almost uh, more than 9,000. So that gives us about a 26% reporting um, rate. We are also at the point where we are doing a very comprehensive analysis of the entire WASH database um, in, in DIMS. And uh, we have reviewed this process and learned some lessons. And so beyond 2022, we are also considering additional indicators um, to bring on board, particularly the goal is to align it with JMP so that as much as possible, be beyond the use um, of the data for local action or national action, it would also be relevant for international um, stakeholders and all other um, stakeholders working in the watch space. So this is how um, it, it, it looks like. So before 2018, um, usually if we wanted any indicators on how hygiene or sanitation was in healthcare facilities and how infection prevention and control systems were in healthcare facilities, we needed to go and do a field survey. Um, um, which might include interviews or institutional capacity assessments. So we thought that um, since we had already a system where healthcare facilities were reporting on maternal mortality, neglected tropical diseases and other institutional um, in indicators, then really a report on wash indicators. So what did was to start some stakeholder engagement and these include um, partners who are working in the wash space um, um, chiefly funded by the WHO and UNICEF but there were also um, other NGOs working in the wash uh, sector these also included frontline managers and then frontline workers themselves uh, wash IPC for Carl persons health information officers quality managers all these people came together for us to discuss how um, the process could be done. And so we identified some uh, minimum indicators by consensus to start with. We institutionalized these indicators into DIMS, which is the District Health Information Management Systems. This is a system where uh, routinely um, indicators or data is reported either weekly, monthly, or quarterly, depending on the, the set of indicators. So to institutionalize this into DIMS, what we did was to have indicator metrics and agree on the elements that healthcare facilities will report to. And then the indicators would be gotten by analysis. So that's kind of a secondary process, but primarily 
we needed to break it down to a level that front. Then we also developed registers that they were used to compile this um, um, data at the front line before they report into DIMS. And then we did some capacity building of focal persons and health information officers um, to be able to understand, for instance, um, if we say there's an improved water source, what does it mean? You know, so all these technicalities, we needed to build capacity of our facilities to be able to do that. And after that, they started quarterly reporting and feedback. Um, the feedback is given quarterly. So as the facilities report, for instance, for first quarter, they would have done the reporting in the first week of April. And we make sure that between that and the second reporting, we analyze the uh, first quarter um, uh, data that has been reported and give them feedback. During that feedback, we are interested in the completeness of the data and um, also the timeliness of the data. And we rank the facilities every quarter on this. So that generates some form of um, um, positive competition with everybody trying to do very well. Um, unfortunately, we have not had all facilities reporting and the reason simply being we haven't been able to train all healthcare facilities so where we have trained them that is where they are able to report so we are also at a, a point where we decided to look deeper at the um, indicators and see what lessons we could learn um, to improve what we were doing so what have done so far and this process is um, funded what we have done so far is to convene a task team that um sorry the data analysis component is supported by who country office and the um, update of the indicators is supported by unicef so what we did was to convene a tax team the tax team did data extraction from the database and did cleaning and then we conducted the initial analysis and uh, following this initial analysis, we brought together some um, stakeholders to do an online validation um, for them to explain some of the outline, you know, findings and some, you know, out of the blue results that we were seeing that we needed to actually understand some grassroots um, contextual issues that probably would have accounted for that. And then after that, we generated a final report with recommendations. Now, from this analysis of the existing database, what we observed is that facilities that were trained were able to report quarterly. And uh, currently, as a national level, we were doing just about 26% coverage. So although this is um, not um, so high, the good news is that the reporting is also done by all 16 regions of Ghana. So that means that the data is still very representative. So we also realized that the watch reporting was deemed very technical and requires capacity building for a valid reporting. Because if you want people to report on basic sanitation and all that, they need to really understand what it means. Otherwise, they are reporting something else which is not valid. So that was quite technical for um, frontline and capacity building for people to be able to uh, be on the same page for the sake of data quality assurance was very um, important. We also realized that the database was very useful for assessing the trends and status of WASH in healthcare facility. It was very representative. And it was also useful in project planning by our partners. Um, when we did the first presentation, all the most of the partners in the watch space were extremely um, interested in this data. They have called for it, and that is what they are using now for deciding um, implementation regions and sites and what level should they invest in and all that. Either to, um, you know, depending on the political power that a particular you know, region has, they're able to pull a project, but now we have data to inform those decisions. And very importantly is the fact that beyond the national usefulness of the data, it has been very helpful for JMP. In 2019, um, WHO Geneva used DIMS um, to estimate wash in healthcare facilities for Ghana. And as we speak, even the 2021, um, is also based on this analysis, which we have done. So. Really, it has been a very useful platform for WASH um, reporting. So from this um, analysis, some of the recommendations, please just a minute.
So from this um, review of the WASH database, some of the recommendations uh, was the need to further update the indicator set with some other um, indicators of interest. And we agreed that this update must be aligned with JMP as much as possible, um, because we've realized that beyond um, national, it's also very useful internationally. And then also to include um, any other non-JMP indicators that are also of national interest. Um, so um, this means that we have to add JMP um, additional indicators and also other partners who deem some indicators very important. And um, we should also include indicators on IPC because this initial database, database has been a little wash biased. And the reporting system must also be as simple as possible to avoid fatigue when people are uh, reporting. So in as much as we want a lot of information, we don't also want to have too much um, indicators to report on so that our frontline do not um, get tired of reporting because that will also affect the quality of data. So from where we are now moving forward, so far on my left are the indicators that we started with. So we have been working with proportion of uh, healthcare facilities with WASH IPC focal persons, proportion of healthcare facilities with focal persons who are trained proportion of healthcare facilities with assistant focal persons and proportion of healthcare facilities with IPC and WASH um, annual action plan, proportion of healthcare facilities with basic water services, proportion of healthcare facilities with uh, basic sanitation services, proportion of healthcare facilities with basic hygiene services, and those with base at once we have ladder. Now uh, moving forward, these are the additional um, indicators that we have been discussing. We had um, the first meeting two weeks ago, and the second meeting is tomorrow and Friday, where we hope to finalize the discussion on the indicate indicators and then have a validation forum. So we are thinking about adding the location of the healthcare facility. So um, if the facility is about to report, there should be a drop down where they are clicking their um, either urban or rural so that we are able to look at wash in rural areas and wash in um, urban areas um, also to see if there are any differences. Then we are also looking at um, um, including indicators on financing um, because recently the Ministry for Sanitation and Water Resources asked us for, to produce annual budget for WASH and we really couldn't give an accurate figure. So we think that if every quarter, every facility is able to tell us about their total planned uh, WASH budget in that particular quarter they are reporting to, it would be helpful. But beyond the planned budget, it's also important for us to know the actual expenditure. So then the difference will give us the need or the unmet financial um, gap, expenditure gap that we need to support these healthcare facilities with. Then we talked about um, wash and gender, and it's been tricky because um, we, we, for instance, um, spoke about looking at um, proportion of um, toilet facilities that have, um, let's say, menstrual hygiene facilities, for instance. And uh, in addition to that, we also have proportion of healthcare facilities with female uh, wash or IPC focal persons. That means that in terms of governance, we'll have one gender indicator. And in terms of the wash service itself, we would have had uh, one gender indicator. Um, healthcare associated infections is, is, is top on the agenda and the surveillance in, in Ghana is not so strong. So we are thinking about um, building consensus on an indicator for healthcare associated infections. And then for environmental cleaning, because we looked at the JMP and one of the key indicators that we had not catered for was on environmental cleaning. And so we would have a um, proportion of uh, healthcare facilities, a proportion of healthcare workers in each of the facilities that are trained on environmental cleaning or just the proportion of um, cleaning staff who are actually trained on um, environmental cleaning. So these were the ones that we had actually um, not uh, concluded discussions on. 
in the last meeting and tomorrow when we meet, they are the ones that we are going to um, agree on. So um, now coming back to the discussion points, the goal of integrating it to DIMS um, is that uh, we, we saw clearly the need for some routine real-time data because we don't always have the time to go to the field or even funding to go to the field to conduct service. So um, we realized that we need that national and international watch surveillance, uh, which is very, very um, important for Ghana. Um, so that will help us to then monitor watch and programmatic key decision making also becomes a very good um, you know, uh, result of the routine reporting. So plans for data use, um, currently we are doing quarterly monitoring and giving feedback. We have also started using the data for some research. We have some proposed uh, manuscript that we might throw out there um, in the next couple of months, but we are using it every day for programming and for stakeholder partnerships to advise where various partners should invest into. Um, in terms of capacity for analytics and visualization, usually our analysis is mainly proportions um, guided by what JMP does. They are usually interested in proportions. Sorry about that. I'm close to the airport, so that's um, some noise from an aircraft. So um, for our DIMS, we have a, 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 a platform for visualization, which we call the pivot tables and the dashboards, but they are mainly able to do um, proportions. But as a team, we have also tried to go ahead and do some inferential statistics. For instance, look at um, what is the relationship between having a wash focal person in a facility and the performance of um, the, the four domains, whether there's basic, limited, or um, no services at all. So those are the kind of um, relationships we want to look at going forward. But for now, I'll say mainly a proportion. Then also we know that managers usually get interested. Data is not in a format that they can really appreciate and understand. So the next thing we want to do is to explore um, the um, what we call scorecards. Ghana so far has scorecards for community nutrition, uh, Ramka and um, malaria um, in partnership with Alma. So we think that once we agree on these indicators, we can also have a wash dashboard, which is usually um, a wash a scorecard, which is usually colored. And so once you come to the dashboard and you go down to your facility and you see an indicator in green, it means you are good. If it's in yellow, um, you are not performing so bad, but you need to improve. And if it's in red, it's very bad. And I think that uh, those visuals actually work best for managers who, um, especially clinicians who are not very data inclined. So in terms of partnership, we are very open to ideas as much as possible, both within Ghana and Ghana. So let me give an example. This is a pro of um, that by all levels of care. So we have hospitals, which are regional hospitals and district hospitals. Those are primary and secondary facilities. We have health centers, polyclinics, clinics, maternity homes, and CHIPS, which is community level. And you see all of them are able to uh, report. Even most of the reporting are CHIPS, which is the lowest level of care. And we have about 300 hospitals. Um, Ghana doesn't have too many hospitals. We have it's about 350 hospitals. So again, most of our hospitals are also uh, reporting. So reporting is in all 16 regions, um, both rural and urban, but it is not segregated currently. So we want to bring in that at the level of reporting so that it comes out clearly. And then also we have reporting by public and private healthcare facilities. So this um, health information uh, management system is actually a good platform to uh, be able to improve uh, reporting on watch. So these are some few graphs that um, I have brought out as an example. Um, so you can see, for instance, this is, uh, I think, basic water services. And the analysis we did, uh, we are able to look at the data across all 16 regions and see, for instance, you see Greater Accra and Ashanti, which are the biggest cities, are having more than 90% of their facilities having basic water services. And then it also gives us the lowest, which are the most regions. We are also able to tell the trends across um, over the years. So um, this will be the first quarter 2018 when they started and up to date, up to um, second quarter 2021. So we are able to also do trends across the years. We are also um, able to do across domains. So this is water, this is um, hygiene. 
And even within um, different types of facilities, for instance, if you take chips or um, healthcare, uh, uh, health centers or hospitals, within that you're also able to tell what proportion of them have basic limited and um, those have no services at all. Um, we are also able to do this within regions. So th this, for instance, is across regions, but even within each region, we're able to tell who has basic sanitation, who has limited sanitation, who has no um, sanitation or whose data is not sufficient to be able to make a judgment. So, um, so this is also um, waste, uh, percentage of uh, facilities with basic waste services in all the regions. So these are examples of some of the analysis 